Good afternoon, everyone, and happy Easter. Hallelujah, the Lord is risen. The This is the second Sunday of Easter, and welcome. We also posted our service, but some parts of it are hard to hear, so I thought I would record just the sermon and the gospel so that you could hear that. Our gospel today is from John 20, 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who is also called the twin, one of twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen, yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. I love Thomas. He is one of my favorite disciples. Maybe because I grew up at St. Thomas Episcopal Church in Christiansburg, Virginia, a community that helped raise me and guide me in my faith. A congregation that celebrated St. Thomas Day every December 21st. So every year when we read this gospel on the Sunday after Easter, I feel deeply drawn to Thomas. Even more than that, I truly relate to Thomas. Many times in my life, I have felt left out or wished I had been there to witness some event that all my friends had seen. Even when I watch some moment of history making in the news, I wish I had been there. And I wonder if Thomas felt that way. I can just imagine him kicking himself for not being there for whatever reason he happened to be out. Because when it came to Jesus, Thomas was all in. He was the one that when Jesus said that he must turn toward Jerusalem after raising Lazarus from the dead, where they knew that Jesus' life would be at risk, said, let us go also that we may die with him. Also like Thomas, I want proof. I can't tell you how many times I have prayed Thomas Merton's prayer, oh Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. 
I have a friend named Tom, and I've just noticed how many Toms are in this paragraph. But my friend Tom and I went to seminary together, and I was always both amazed and envious of his absolute faith, belief, and passion for Jesus. I wanted so badly, and still do, and I hate it when doubt creeps in from the edges of my consciousness. And I wish I were more like our St. Thomas, who wasn't afraid to say what he needed, even if the others were scoffing at him, since they had already seen Jesus with their own eyes. Maybe they were even frustrated at Thomas for not believing them. Or, or maybe some of them were still struggling with what they had seen with their own eyes and were relieved that Thomas was struggling too, especially because it was through his need for proof, his questioning, and his struggle that Jesus appeared and allowed the reaffirmation of faith for all of them. So, I love this man who loved Jesus with the courage to speak up. John's Gospel ends today with John saying, Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. John's desire for his readers was that they would come to believe. When we hear the words, come to believe, I think the implication is that belief is not instantaneous. It's more of a process. Just like Thomas's belief that Jesus had come back to life did not happen instantly. I've hardly ever experienced sudden transformation. The changes that matter most have always come sideways in fits and starts and often without my conscious understanding or effort. And anyone who has battled with addiction or stuck it out in a challenging relationship or lived in a chronic illness will testify that to that genuine conversation or conversion is lifelong. Maybe, maybe this is why the earliest Christians referred to their new faith as the way. A way is not a destination. It's a road to walk. It's an invitation to journey. But here's what else in this story that should not go unnoticed. It took place in a community. Thomas felt safe to declare that he doubted Mary Magdalene's and the other disciples' story of the unbelievable. And they stayed with Thomas for a whole week before Jesus appeared through a closed door. And they had already been traveling on this journey just the way the congregation at St. Thomas shared that road with me. Now I share that road with you. And I pray that is how we feel about Trinity or for you all out there watching as a group of believers that struggle along the way and a place where we feel safe to voice our doubts and our questions.
When I look at the reading from Acts today about how the Christian believers shared all their possessions and kept nothing for themselves so that no one could go without. And with great power they testified about the resurrection. And then in 1 John we hear about division among the believers and how they were encouraged to walk in the light in fellowship with one another. And then I realized that all three readings appointed for today were about community. They supported each other in doubt, in fear, in confusion, and in their differences. And when division rose up, they were reminded to walk as children of the light. They were reminded of their purpose, their purpose to testify to the resurrection and to forgive and to forgive and to forgive. Thomas's story reminds me that resurrection is hard. It's hard from the get-go and it's still hard now. Hard to accept, hard to internalize, and hard to apply to our lives, especially when our lives are marked by pain, loss, uncertainty, and death. If nothing else, Thomas reassures me that faith doesn't have to be straightforward. The business of accepting the resurrection or living it out, of sharing it with the world, is tough. It's okay to waver. It's okay to take our time. It's okay to hope for more. There is nothing I want more than to proclaim my Lord and my God, like Thomas did that day, like my friend Tom does so openly and freely. And most days, I do. And some days, I really want to. But some days, the doubts roll in for whatever reason that life has thrown at me. On those days, I'm thankful that I have a community surrounding me, holding me up, and pointing me toward Jesus until I find the words again. Scott Gunn, the director of Forward Movement, who wrote in our day-by-day -day devotional about a man who, when coming forward to receive communion, would always say, My Lord and my God whenever bread was placed in his hands. Father Gunn said that the man's response and unfettered adoration always moved him and that the joining with the Apostle Thomas in professing our faith with all was a beautiful thing. He noted that it's easy to get stuck on the questions or problems in our faith. But doubt is the companion of faith, not the opposite. And spending time with the lives of the saints reminds us that nearly all the heroes of our faith wavered and wondered at times. The key is to keep moving to look for Jesus on this journey. He is with us in the church, in the sacraments, and in his people. Let us help each other see him. And when we do, let us say, my Lord and my God. So, thank you all for joining me today. If you have any comments or questions, please post them on the Facebook page. And if you have any prayer requests, please post those as well. And thank you for joining us. And 
The peace of the Lord be always with you.